Hello. Hello, people. We know what one of those are is, don't we? Hi, Max. This is a full, complete, let's tune the snare drum bottom style, how to tune the snare bottom style to get that nice throaty bottom sound that only bottom used to get. Actually, Alex Van Halen kind of gets it too, but he mutes his head a little more. It's not rocket science, but... What it is? Well, there's a couple things. For that really exact sound, you, you kind of really do need a Lud alloy, which is an aluminum alloy shell, Ludwig 6.5 by 14. Although the tuning style for any snare drum to kind of get that sound is the same. Meaning, now there's going to be a lot of talk in this video, but just be patient. That the bottom head for that type of tuning is always higher pitched. It's tighter, okay? Not by much. Usually what they call a minor, usually what they call a minor third. Da, 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 da. Not da da da, which is a major third. Da 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 da. Hear that? This is B major. It's got to be minor. Okay, that one <clears throat> is a D sharp. D sharp top. Um. F sharp bottom, okay, minor third, ba ba. So ma no matter what note you do the top head to, do a minor, well, sometimes I find a minor third or a fourth. They both have sort of like a minory, sad sort of da da. It's not like a happy majory, da 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 ba ba ba, like a fifth, okay? Ba 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 ba, fifth, fifth, fifth. Not this. But, but the minor third or a fourth. So either a fourth or a minor third, okay? My opinion. Also, too, there's the possibility, like how DW has the shell tone tuning, like they pick up the shell and they go doop doop, and you get the tone of the shell. Kind of like when you're in the shower and there's the, what do they call it, the harmonic note. Where you hum, like I used to be in the shower, be like, mm, and I get to a note, which I think was a G, and the whole would be like, mm, the whole room would like resonate. So that could be it. So technically speaking, if you want to take your six and a half or any snare drum apart, get a fundamental tone, maybe tune. It might remember you might not tune the top head to that or the bottom. Maybe the one of them, or maybe there's some kind of a chord that might it might work better for. I haven't put that much research into it, but. I do what I do. Anyway, but an interesting note is Bonham used to always tune his own snare. If you ever read stuff, they'd be like, yeah, I used to tune the kit, but John Bonham used to always tune his own snare. Take it off and he'd tune it. He was always in charge of tuning his snare. So he was very fickle about it. So, a lot of loy, aluminum shelled. I mean, you could probably, you know, again, it's mostly, it's a lot of it's in the tuning, but the aluminum shell gives it that extra sort of throaty crack. And Yuri compressors, what are they, Universal Audio? Compression helps a lot too. It really helps with the, it's okay, Mox, with the with the tone of it. It it it. When I was recording one time a record, well, disc self funded. When the guys turned up the I forget the threshold or whatever of the Yuri Universal Audio, I think, uh, compressor, it instantly added a lot more of the bottom sound to the snare drum. So you can't underestimate that. In fact, there's a Led Zeppelin picture. There's a picture of the guys jamming from the side of the stage. It might even be on the cover of a book. We're off to the lower right of the picture. You can see piping hot Yuri compressors running. I don't know if they're recording the show or if they pipe it out to the audience with that. So they used outboard gear all the time. All right. There it is, okay? This one is a minor third. It's, it's hard to tell. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this camera into the kitchen and I'm going to tune this is a super sensitive it doesn't make a difference it's 
people find the, the mechanism a little more annoying, but the drum is the same. Super sensitives, super sensitives have snare beds. Okay, they do. So, all right. So we're going to head into the Cosina and tune up a 6.5 by 14 Ludaloy Supra. Okay? <laughs> Okay, here we are, okay? From the ground up. This is not going to be one of those, like, pull it out like the cooking show where they sort of see him doing it and then suddenly there it is, it's done. Okay? Here we are. This is a run-of-the-mill, I specifically selected a run-of-the-mill garden variety, 6 nap by 14 superphonic. doesn't have to be a vintage one, it doesn't have to be a new one, as long as it's a Ludaloy shell. Here we go. This is about a 1981-ish or two, okay? Pitted to heck. By the way, if you look at a lot of John Bonham pictures of his drums, his aluminum superphonics, <laughs> lovely superphonics, are almost always pitted. So, there you go. All right. And again, you don't necessarily, you don't need 42 strands either. We'll get to that. All right. Here it is. Has the tone control, but it is, the knob has been taken off. So, that can make a difference because sometimes you need to just very slightly touch, especially if you have a coated ambassador or a reasonable effect, something there up on top. Sometimes you have to touch the tone control a teeny bit to the top head. Okay, you can actually see bottom in Moby Dick. If I recall, Royal Albert Hall, right before he starts Moby Dick, he takes the you can see him mess with the tone control because when he, when he do the solo, he'd like that snare to be ringy. Okay, all right. What we're gonna do is I have this head. Okay. Now, there's a couple things here. This is a Remo Ambassador, but it has this thingy on the bottom. It's a, I think it's a black dot. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make, you don't necessarily need a Remo Ambassador or a Remo Emperor, okay, uh, as a top head. You need a head that's not, you need, you need one that's a little muffled on its own, like, a, like an Emperor. I think an Emperor is, is a 2-ply 7.5, 7.5 plus 7.5, I recall, head. This, with this on the bottom, we'll, we'll mimic that for our purposes. But the reason why I'm doing this, I don't think I'm being lazy, which I can be. Part of what is important, too, is the top head. When you put brand new heads on drums, you'll hear this all the time. You're going to go into the studio and record, and people will say, you know what? You're getting in there, put brand new heads on and head in. Wrong. Don't. You don't want them to be ancient, but as long as the drums sound good, that's what you go with. Because as we, well, as we all should know, when you put brand new heads on a drum set, they have to kind of, you know, some people say you have to seat them or they have to sort of season. What a lot of guys do when they put the heads on, they'll sort of tighten it up medium and they push it down real hard. That still doesn't really do the job so much. I'm sort of convinced that you, it's kind of like when you're sort of portly sometimes like me, you put your jeans on fresh out of the drawer you kind of got to, you know, bend down, kind of scrunch down, like, sort of like fit them in a little. And you notice after, by the end of the day, they fit really nice. Well, at first, they're tight, right? There's a little bit of a tightness. Now, Bonham has said, as you've heard, Bonham had a road tech before Mick Hinton. I forget the guy's name, but he made a comment, maybe it was Mick Hinton, that he, Bonham hated when the heads were changed, especially on his snare drum. Because he, even though Bonham tuned the snare drum, McKint would sometimes change the heads uh, more often on the toms. Like if you remember, there's an article where he said, well, what I used to do sometimes, I'd change the head and I'd get a little dirty and I'd use a little sandpaper to make it look worn in, but what did Bonham say? Something like, ah, taking the law into your own hands or something. Anyway, but the point is, Bonham also made a comment at one point about how the snare head, he's like, you know what, I, I like, he made a comment, I forget exactly what he said, about preferring the heads to be worn in a little bit. And he said, the, the snare drum I have now has been on there for three tours, okay? Now, in 1969, three tours would have been eight months, right? But, I don't know when the article is from, three tours, you know, 1973 or, or five would be a couple of years, right? Now, granted, he might have just played the drums just when he was playing those shows, you know, which you could number. But anyway, my point is, start with a top head that's already sort of, you've had on another drum, or at least has, has sort of been seated. This one has, okay? It sort of vibrates a little, okay? It can be a Remo Emperor, or it can be an Evans G2, whatever sort of a two-ply-ish, two not too thin top head, okay? Let's start with it. So we're gonna put this guy right on, okay? Ludwig P. 
pitted, run-of-the-mill, garden variety. I paid $175 for this at Musical Round. Superphonic, okay? What a All right, let's get the top hoop. I gotta make this fast because my camera, and for your guys' sake, anyway. But I'm gonna do this in real time because people don't. They'll be like, you know, they kind of ass around with this, like I, did, like, ah, like I did. And they sort of are like, well, here it is, and it's done, okay? Top head. I'm gonna do this fast. What I do, quick, you gotta watch here, okay? Or I don't know, smoke them if you got them. I'm gonna do, remember, I'm doing this in real time. So I'm gonna just pop these guys in by finger. This is what I do anyway, and most people do, I think. But I'm gonna try and do this fast. I can't. Camera, please don't die, because it's been a hunk of crap lately. All right. So I'm getting these guys in. I have two drum keys here, which I recommend. But what you do, and this is an aside, this isn't necessarily what Bonham did, but this is what I do. So you get these guys in. I should tell a joke. I just got a book on jokes, which I thought was kind of funny. I got it at some store. Oh, by the way, the video I made, the Dildolium video, was supposed to be fun. Okay, I was supposed to be, you know, normally Bonzolium. Normally I'm all chatty and I'm all nice and blah, blah, blah. I just thought it would be funny one day. I was thinking that if I had an alter ego, and I don't mean it like a Garth Brooksy kind of thing, but it was sort of off the top of my head. I had that black fez flying around. I just thought I'd make a quick video where I was sort of the opposite of my normal self. I was just kind of really surly, like a toughie. And I don't know, I just thought it was funny. Apparently a lot of people didn't, but you know, I'm leaving it up there because it's my channel. All right, so, but yeah, it was just supposed to be kind of funny. That's all. So if you listen closely, there's some stuff. I don't know, I just thought it was kind of funny. But anyway, all right, so here, folks, and you know, my wife, people are like, oh my God, dude, your neighbor come and beat you up or your wife leave you? My wife hasn't left me yet, although there was the Comcast guy who's been here all month at odd hours. All right, here we go. So what I'm doing now is I'm using my fingers, grasping, you know, w making a finger tight, as they say, okay? Remember, and tuning is not really rocket. It, it's, a lot of people, I think, get over-consumed with tuning. There's a method I saw one time which actually makes good sense. You kind of go like this, and I find it works. Get these guys finger tight. And remember, this is real done, people. Finger tight, finger tight. Okay. So what you do then, press the middle down. I saw a fellow do this once. Didn't and you look for wrinkles, okay? This doesn't matter. Let's just, for now, we're concentrating on the pitch of the top head, okay? Okay, what I do is I kind of wait till I go every other log. Okay. So it's an odd, it's 10 logs. Well, it's even, but it behaves odd if you're going around on every other log, and then she's going to hit each one. Okay, more or less, kind of sort, but not really. Okay, so now we skip over to the other one. So I'm just tuning this up by hand tightness, okay? The important thing is we're going to get a tone. Put a tone on at the top head. And I don't normally do it one head at a time like this, but I'm going to do it in this case. So we're going to have sort of a timbali. Right? Okay. That is too low. Okay? If you go, good references are, go to the studio version of Moby Dick, and you hear Bonham playing with his hands, on the drum, that is. Right? Just listen to that tone. Go for that tone if you want. But my, the point I'm going to try and make is that it's important that it's the relationship between the top and bottom head. The most important being that the top head, or that the bottom head, is uh, tighter. Usually by almost always a minor third or a fourth. My opinion. Okay, this is my opinion. It's still a little, but it can't be too tight because the drum will choke. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm feeling rods that are just a little looser than others. Usually, it'll be a certain like the odds. If the evens are really tight, then the odds will sort of be loose. Okay, so. putting a new resonant head on, okay? I'm going to use in this case, this is an Evans Orchestral 300. People are like, Evans? <gasps> Trust me. 
I love Remo heads too, but I have an Evans here. This one to me feels like, I kind of honestly forget how this relates. I think this might be a Diplomat thickness, but this one to me feels almost identical to the ones you would get on 60s and 70s, even early 80s Ludwigs. The Remo resonance now to me seem to have a little more of a, um, of like a, I don't know how to say it without being mean or sound like a jerk. But you know the heads that, the Cineracide heads that come out a lot of brand new stuff real cheesy? They're a little like that. Now they seem like that. They still work for me. I still use them. They still sound good. But let's just say, well for now, let's, let me just dig myself out of the Remo hole. Crap. Get either a <laughs> Remo Diplomat or this Evans Orxel 300. To me this feels almost exactly like a uh, Cineracide Diplomat or Cineracide Ambassador you find on the bottom of a, any Ludwig drum from the 60s or 70s. So that's what I'm going to use, okay? Well, that's just a ransom. Let's put this guy right down. There it goes. And even on this drum, there's some pitting, even at the bearing edge. We're even going to, that happens. You know, bubbling and flaking, whatever. We're just whatevering it, okay? All right. Snare side bottom, okay? Let's put this baby on. Always make sure, obviously, to line up the gates. You can tell how many times I've tuned it up and been like, hey, the gates are misaligned. Wah, wah. All right. So. Then, I made a boo-boo. I didn't take off. Give me eight seconds while I get a screwdriver. Alright. So, actually it doesn't matter yet. I'm going to use, I left the, original vintage Ludwig string on here, which by the way, I have actual <laughs> real Ludwig, the stuff they actually used to use. I have a big spool of it. Yeah, I'll tell you about that later. But, alright, so, same thing on the bottom head. Start busting these guys out. Same thing we did before. Get them on their finger tight. Um, So, um, putting these guys on, one, two, three, eight, nine, ten. Hope everybody's had a good week. Hope, uh, Mark, how's the wife? Shelly, how's that dog? Guy, how's England? All right, Guy, you're the man. Shout out to Guy. Shout out to Graham. Shout out to Michael. Shout out to... Stanley. Shout out to Paul Allen. Okay, here we go. So, now I'm going to try and make this fast, really. I know time is money. Mime is money. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Finger tightening real time. This is a real time video, okay? Real time. None of this close to I can at it. In my state of the art camera. Go as fast as I can. Camera don't run out of juice. It really suck. So I'm not going to make this video again if it happens. Alright, okay, finger tight, finger tight, working our way around, finger tight. Okay, so, finger tight, finger tight on the snare side, thank God everything lines up, snare gates line up, make sure that that has busted me on numerous occasions, even at a show before the show is going to start, and I was like, gosh darn it. Alright, so, finger tight, okay? So, what I do now is I'm going to use one hat. Well, I'll use one key for Again, same thing. Push it in. Skip one. This is 10 log. Wrinkling's gone. Skip one. Wrinkling's kind of gone. Skip all well, with these super fire sometimes with the pitting we got to take it. Alright. Wrinkling's gone. Go to the app. The next one. The odds. You're gonna now the other because the primaries are tight. Now you gotta do that. You gotta fill in the blank with the ones that have not been tight. You gotta be careful there though because you can crank it a little too much. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Wrinkles are. Oh, I got grease from these rods on everything. Where, where? Damn ye. All right. So. I think I hit a minor throw right off the bat.
it right on the nose. Okay. Minor third. later 70s kind of more white string you know what it is though the key is it's double braided dot double braided nylon braided nylon with core you get it from lampshade companies you know when you pull those up that's the s-h-i-t they use end of story that's it all right these are late model ludwig snares doesn't matter as long as they're not too one or two of them are kind of loose in there all right here's my new old stock it's not really new stock, but believe it or not, on Lincoln Avenue in Chicago, right up by where there's a drum store now, apparently, they've never been in there, there's a place called Ludwig, it's like Ludwig Lampshade, or Ludwig, sorry, Ludwig, I don't know, and the, the logo looks just like Ludwig. I don't know if it's a relative of Ludwig, but the L and the G are attached, and I have a suspicion that that might have been done before Ludwig did it in the 70s. Anyway, so I went in there and said, hey, do you have any double braided nylon cord? And they said, yeah, what do you want? I picked in the catalog, I said, this. So I got a big spool. It was like $100 or more, but it's like 2,000 yards or something. I should sell some on eBay. But actually, if you need some, well, let's go get some. All right, so it looks and is exactly the stuff that they used to do. All right, so what I do, right, got it through. Make sure you go through the snare guides. How many times have you done this? And it goes over the snare guide. You're like, God. All right, so that one's kind of through there. What I'm going to do is sort of tighten it a little just so it just so it sort of stays in there for now, all right? So I don't want to be arsing around at the other end. Come on. And have it pop off while I'm doing something, okay? Whoop. Flip it around. All right. Through the holes. Sorry, I'm shakes the clown. The coffee doesn't help. All right. So. All right. So. So what we're going to do. We're getting this guy here. Moxie was shooting a break over the snare noise. All right. So what we do now is what is always a hassle. What I do sometimes, to be honest, well, I do what everybody else does. I kind of fart around with this. Eh, trying to get the, the thing through the hole. Get it in the hole. Get it in the hole. Here we go. I know this is long and boring, but watch it, okay? This is a video where you're actually going to freaking learn how to tune the snare. I'm fine on style. Okay. Here we go. Again, make sure it's through the gate, not over, because sometimes, at least in my haste, I will mess that up. All right. Ooh, boy, I, have enough, I hope I have enough slack here to tighten that. Oh, no. All right. So what we do is I set it up. This is my own personal thing. Is I set it up so there's a little more slack on this side. Because this side, you can sort of, if it's not tight enough, you can adjust. You can pull it this way. This one's going to be fixed with the knot, unless you use that cellophane stuff. Well, I don't. Typically. So I'm going to set this guy up about right there. Remember, it doesn't have to be precise. I'm going to line it up and start tightening this guy. Okay? All right. Kind of tight. 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 Okay. Oops. All right. Shakes the clown. Yes, I am. All right. That is now tight. Okay? So if I need to, in the end, sort of correct things, more tighten the snare a little, I'll do it from this end. Okay, so I've left a little extra slack. So, now, here's the part. What I do is make sure the snare mechanism is disengaged. <gasps> oh my god! Oh, okay. That scared the life of me. Make sure it's not totally loose, but you don't want it, you, you want some play in there. So you want to unscrew it kind of as much as you can, and then do it like this, okay? Now we're going to do is we tie a knot. Now, did you know that there's actually, when you tie a knot like this, you actually have to crisscross the rats and rats. You have to do like your tie your shoes, then you do the opposite, right? Actually, when you tie your shoes, you're supposed to do that too. But okay, so now I do the opposite. Then you get that sheep shank knot thingy. Okay, oh, oop, shake the clown. Shake 
Lucky the Clown. Here we go. I know this is hard to watch with my babbling, but I'm doing the best I can. All right? It's that. All right, so. Okay. I'm going to get you kind of tight. Otherwise, it's going to soup. Okay. There we go. There's my knot. All right. So, you can see it's totally loose, which is... Anyway, so what I'm going to do... See how loose it is? I kind of maybe messed up a little bit, maybe not. So I'm just going to tighten the snare thingy. Ah, no, I think I'm good. This is with it engaged. See, you can see that, okay? This, I mean, this is stuff you know yourself, that I'm mean, sure everybody themselves has learned. Let's tighten it up. And here's another key. The snare wires can't be really tight, because it chokes it. You kind of need more like a... Not there yet. Ah, that's about there. You know what? We're right there. This is pretty much it, folks. Remember, minor third. If that doesn't work, do a fourth. Instead of ba 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 top head, bottom head, top head, bottom head, or top head uh, da, 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 a fourth. All right. People, that really kind of is it. All right? So, let me... What am I going to do? Let me take the snare in first. Psst, 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 psst. Moxie, you're scared of that. Get that guy up. Okay. The proof of the... I'm going to grab a key. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Here's the room we were just in, not five, ten minutes ago. All right, wait. We're gonna the snare stand. Okay. Super sensitive's over there. Remember, exact same drum. Ludaloy just has a super sensitive mechanism. And, okay, here we go. Hang on. That's it. Now, you hear that little ring? Well, there's a couple fine tunings that you can do. Hang on. All right, I'm gonna have to edit this together for the love of Christ, because the camera freaking died. Anyway, I don't know where it left off. I, th it, I think it left off when I came back in here. All right, so remember, minor third. Ba, 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 not ba, 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 but ba, 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 okay? Or a fourth. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 those relationships seem to work best. I hear of a minor third on each one of these. Okay? Again, it's a teeny bit ringy because Bonham touched, in my opinion, the tone control to the bottom head. Okay? But you cannot underestimate the Uri well, the compression they used. They used outboard gear. They also closed mic'd under the snare drum. On top, you get the more Tommy snare sound. On the bottom, you get that real fine, okay? That's important. And again, when I was in a studio, a place called Gravity, recording, fellow there, Doug McBride, God love me, is a studio, they're great. Anyway, tons of great gear. Yuri, I think it's Universal Audio. I always want to say United Audio. Universal Audio Compressor. I don't know what, as soon as, I remember he's like, ah, well, you know, Pants was the guy's nickname, God love him, great pro Tullius guy. Turn up the blah, 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 threshold on the Yuri or whatever, the 1176. And that <laughs> became more bonomy by every little click turn thing, okay? So remember that, okay? Um, what else? Also, too, here's a secret. This is the secret of... This is the secret. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. A rim shot, okay? You cannot underestimate...
I have to edit this again together. Okay, I know where that one died though. The rim shot. Do not underestimate the rim shot. There you go, watch. And that, people, is how. <sighs> Redo. And that, people, is how you get the snare sound. Minor third or fourth. All right, I'm not going to summarize. Camera keeps dying. Just watch the.